Okay, hi guys. Um, we're from the University of Utah's Chemical Engineering Department, and I'm Nandini, and I'm a sophomore in the department this year. Um, my name's Melissa, and I'm a junior in the department this year. And we're just here to talk to you a little bit about what chemical engineering is, and kind of like what are some of the different applications and what you can do with a degree once you graduate. Hey, what's your name? Oh, so, okay, so Nandini, and, and then I'm Melissa. And then, it's okay if you don't spell them, right? Yeah, it's just okay if you don't spell them. Yeah. But, um... <laughs> Alright. And then you can go next. Okay, so what do y'all think is chemical engineering? It's where you engineer chemicals. Okay. You engineer chemicals. Alright, alright. Anything else? We use like lead or something. Okay, that's good. Cool. Those are answers we, like, almost always get. <laughs> cool. Alright, you can go to the next slide. So, chemical engineering is using all the things that you guys are learning right now that you, that you hate or are useless, like math and science. Because I know in high school, I hated math and science, and I didn't understand why it was useful or like how it could apply to my life. But we use all of those different cool things to solve problems in the world. Like medical problems, we use them to solve energy problems and to solve nano. Like, you can do pretty much anything with chemical engineering, which is pretty cool. All right, so what do you guys think is the difference between a chemical engineer and a chemist? Mm -hmm. Okay, you got one stack. Maybe uh, engineers use more math. Okay, so that's actually part of it. It's kind of funny. That's not an answer we usually get, but that's true. <laughs> Anything else? All right, so the difference... I, oh, we right? can flip it, yes. Yeah. Alright, cool. Okay, this one's going to be kind of an animation. So, so you can just keep, <laughs> just keep clicking. <laughs> For a little bit. Yeah. So the difference between a chemical engineer and a, chemi and a chemist is, say that there was like a zombie apocalypse, like tomorrow, and a chemist would be able to create one formula. And this formula is on point. Like, it's going to solve everyone's problems, and it's going to cure everyone, and make sure they don't turn into zombies, and we're in a good place. But this chemist can only have one of these formulas, whereas a chemical engineer takes that formula and creates a process to replicate it. So while the chemist can make one, the chemical engineer can make billions in a really short period of time. So what we say is that a chemist, there's just any new idea, and any that all it all comes down to like one specific problem. And a chemist will maybe create a formula or they'll use chemicals to create a solution to that problem. And a chemical engineer innovates and uses process to be able to make that large scale. You can keep flipping, sorry. Yeah. So, there we, you go. So that's kind of what we get to work in, I guess, instead of a little lab. Usually we're working in chemical plants. Uh, you can go to the next slide. So, what types of careers do you guys think are available to chemical engineers? Do you guys have any ideas? Come on. How about over here? You asked me a question, I get to ask you a question. No? Yeah. Okay, rocket science, that's a really good one. What else? We kind of mentioned a few of them previously. When we talked about solving problems. Through nanotechnology. Okay, exactly. Na nanotechnology. <laughs> Okay, so you can flip. So, one of the main ones, the one that most chemical engineers work in, is energy. Um, so, you can, yeah, just keep going. So, for example, oil is our biggest right now because a lot of plastics are made out of oil and we need oil to drive our cars, and that's right now the biggest kind of source of fuel that we have, as well as natural gas. Um, and then we use coal to fire kind of like our electric, I guess. I mean, all the electricity we have, most of it comes from coal. So right now, those are our big kind of areas, but we really want to move towards our alternative energy because we want to make sure that, you know, we're making sure that we respect the environment and that, um, you know, we're going to run out of fuel eventually, and so we want to find alternative methods to come up with fuel. So who here knows what the leading biofuel is? French fry oil. French fry oil? Okay, no, uh, but that'd be awesome. Vegetable oil. Okay, so what kind of vegetable? 
Yeah, exactly. Oh. Corn. That's a good one. Okay, good job, guys. So corn right now, corn ethanol, is the leading biofuel. And sometimes you guys will notice, like, when you go fill up your tank at the gas station, it'll say, like, may contain up to, like, 10% ethanol. And that's made out of corn. And so the problem with corn is that it's not very cost effective. And a lot of people believe that we're pumping more money into, like, producing corn and getting fuel out than we're actually getting out of, like, the oil that it produces. So what we have in the corner is um, it's coming. It's like algae biofuel. <laughs> the name slipped me when I'm when I'm up here. But basically, algae is a plant. It's basically pond scum, and it kind of grows oil inside of it, and that's how it stores energy as fat. And so you can basically kill the algae, which is kind of sad, but not really because it's just a plant and then extract the oil from it, which is great. And so that's kind of what we're moving towards right now. And then solar, and then what other kinds of alternative energies are there? Wind. Wind, exactly. And then, anybody else? Hydro. Okay, hydroelectric, excellent. So who here, does anybody know what a fuel cell is? No? So it's kind of like a battery. Usually, most people don't encounter fuel cells because they're not widely available yet. So basically, a fuel cell will take hydrogen and oxygen and put them together, and the only byproduct is water, and you get electricity out of it. So why do you guys think we're not using fuel cells? So yeah, it's expensive. And then what do you guys know about hydrogen? You need it to live. So yes. But um, what about like a tank of hydrogen? What would be the problem for having that in a car? It can blow up. Exactly. Yeah. Hydrogen is highly, highly explosive. So if we had a tank of hydrogen in a car and we got into a car accident, you know, that would be terrible. So right now they're working on making that more effective. And then somebody said hydroelectric, which is similar to geothermal. And then there's one more, nuclear. So we also work a lot in the nuclear, and they're actually building a nuclear reactor right now in Green River that was approved. So if you went into chemical engineering, you could work here as a nuclear engineer. Um, okay, so what else can chemical engineers do? This was the energy side, but there's a lot of other things. Now that you have kind of an idea, somebody have a guess? Okay, excellent. Medicine? Okay, just ignore that. That's our fog machine. It just kind of spews out. <laughs> okay, so um, you can just flip the fog. So food, did you guys think that we made food? Maybe? No? So... You know, Pop-Tarts, why do you guys think that like, have you guys ever thought actually about if you put a Pop-Tart in like a toaster, um, what happens to the frosting? It doesn't melt, right? What if you put like a cookie, a frosted cookie in a toaster? The frosting would get all over the place, right? So a chemical engineer specifically engineered the frosting on top so that it wouldn't melt off. And so chemical engineers do a lot with foods and food products. They're kind of the main producers, I guess. They're working in, in a food company and kind of like helping design the different foods and coming up with new flavors. And then they also do a lot of things with paper products. So you guys can thank chemical engineers for having toilet paper, <laughs> even though you don't really think about that often. And then um, cosmetics. So, why do you guys think chemical engineers are important for cosmetics? Does anybody Come on, ladies. Up? I know, or men. Do you all wear, like, mascara? <laughs> like, you don't want that burning your face off, because that would suck. And you want to, like, lengthen your eyelashes and not make sure that they're, like, never there again. So, I don't think we think about so much how many chemicals we put on our face when we're putting makeup on. And, like, it's quite a bit, and we have to make sure that, like, when we're when we're creating all of these things, that they're safe for our skin and that you're not going to wake up 30 years from now and have like holes in your face because we bleached your face or because we did weird things to it. Yeah. That sounds horrible. Nobody wants that to happen. <laughs> okay, so does anybody know what this is? Over here where it says MakerBox? It is a 3D printer. It is a 3D printer. Gosh, you know all the answers. <laughs> you guys are good up there. You guys are doing a really good job. So yeah, we work a lot with plastics, and we have several 3D printers up at the U that you can work on when you do projects. We just like to have that up there. Um, and then, yeah.
yes, you can just keep cycling through. And then we mentioned before environmental, we want to make sure that kind of all the processes that we're creating, that we're making them environmentally friendly. So we're getting rid of all those harmful chemicals that are um, getting out into the environment. And then nanotechnology again. So everything's kind of moving towards the nano scale right now. So we use nanotechnology for a lot of different things, especially with like computer chips and things like that. We need to make them very, very extremely pure um, in order to hold more memory. And so, I mean, I'm not that old, but I remember the first phone that I had, and it could hold maybe like 23 pictures, and that was basically it. Then I had to like download them and then take more pictures, and they were like super tiny when you like uploaded them onto the computer screen, and I was like, this is horrible. And this phone that I just got holds like hundreds of pictures, and I'm like, this is awesome. You know, I don't have to worry about that. And that's because of nanotechnology. Um, and then you can keep going. And then somebody said medicine. So we worked a lot in pharmaceutics and coming up with new medications. And then synthetic materials. So why do you guys think we would want like a synthetic diamond versus a real diamond? Or why would we need one? Is it to like jip your fiance? <laughs> like, why? So what do you guys know about diamonds? They're sharp and then durable. They're very durable. So they're like the hardest compound that we know of right now. And so they're great for like cutting things, right? Because they're stronger than anything else. So we can use synthetic diamonds to put on saw blades and things like that and cut through really um, like hard materials without having to spend so much money. So if we can make synthetic things, we save a lot of money. Uh, but you want to give your girlfriend a great diamond. Like a real <laughs> Okay. Um, and then, I guess I can do this too. So, chemical engineering, does anybody here want to go to like med school or law school or anything like that? I want to get my Okay, that's awesome. So like, the nice thing about chemical engineering is that it's like a four year degree and then afterwards if you want to keep doing something else, I mean, it's, it's like really great if you want to go to like med school or law school or if you want to do management, a lot of chemical engineers end up in management, not just like in the lab. Or maybe if you come up with your own idea and you want to start like your own business, a lot of people do that too. Um, or also if you end up wanting to go to grad school, you don't have to go to graduate school for the same thing that you went to your undergrad for. So you look great going to like nuclear, you can go into biomedical, you can go into all different types of grad schools, or you could just do like a master's, um, and you can become an astronaut if you want to. So the first African American female who went to outer space was a chemical engineer. Um, and then who here likes money? I like money. Or like even if you don't like money, you have to admit that like you kind of need money. Um, so does anybody here have a job? So how much do you guys get paid? Oh, my teacher. <laughs> <laughs> That's still pretty good. Uh, so is it like, what's minimum wage right now? $7.25. Yeah, $7.25. Okay, so as a chemical engineer, you make a lot more than that. So we can flip to the next slide. So these are the top paying bachelor degrees of 2013. So it's a little old, but still good. Um, and chemical engineering makes $32.50 an hour. And this is straight out of bachelor's. So this is basically four years of college right after you get your degree, and that's the average paying. And that's honestly, like, in Utah, it's kind of low, and that's why, like, the average is kind of low. Some places are kind of low, but, like, for example, if you went to work in Texas, you'd be making, like, average is, like, $95,000 starting for the annual salary. Um, so you can make a lot, a lot of money, which is great. And then petroleum engineering, which is the highest, is actually just like a specialized chemical engineer. So it's chemical engineering, but you focus more with like the oil and things like that. So what do you guys notice about all of these degrees besides that some of them are engineering? So not all of them are engineering, but what skills do you need? Math. Exactly, so you need math, right? <laughs> so finance is math. Um, so math is really, really important. So we want you guys to really focus on math, and even if you don't, love math, like I feel like it's because it doesn't seem very applicable yet, but once you can apply it, like it just starts to make more sense and you'll kind of see why it's more useful. Um, do you want to go to the next, next one? And so
so even though money is like super, super awesome, the main reason that we do chemical engineering is because you want to discover, you want to create, you want to be able to do life-changing things. Um, you can keep going, sorry. So basically, you want to change the world. That's why you go into engineering. And it's not just chemical engineering, it's all kinds of engineering, or all kinds of science. Um, and it all starts with you guys. Oh. <laughs> the University of Design. No, I was going to make some It's like super cheesy. Um, okay, so how do you guys think you can prepare? I'll ask you. The answers are up there. Anyone? You guys can just like read them off if you want. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you want to make sure that you're taking like as many math and science classes as you want. And it doesn't, you know, you can take like biology too, it's not up there, or like astronomy, sometimes they're offered, or like earth sciences, like everything um, is helpful. And then do you guys think that you need to be like the best of the best to be like a chemical engineer? Definitely. No. <laughs> you got it wrong. <laughs> no, that's the most that's important too question. <laughs> so you don't have to be like the best of the best. You don't have to get straight A's. You don't have to like, you know, be the best in the class to be an engineer. You just have to really want it and you have to try hard. And if you try hard and work hard, you'll be a lot better off than someone who's like a genius and who never does any work because they're lazy or what they don't care. Um, and so we really want to enforce that now. And then study. So does anybody here study more than an hour a day? Okay, nobody here studies that. <laughs> Not Come on, guys. Okay, so the thing about college <laughs> is that it's pretty tough and shocking for those who haven't, like, you know, you don't really know what it's like until you get there, but it's kind of a shocker for a lot of people their first semester because you're not really used to doing so much homework, and then they give you, like, a crap load of homework. And so... It's not that it's hard, but it's just like a lot of work. So you want to be able to develop those study habits now. So get used to like studying a little bit more, because for every credit that you take, um, a professor can give you up to three hours of work. And usually classes are like three credits, so that's like you know like nine hours of work for just one class. So it's like a full time job. Um, and so you want to be able to definitely start doing that and then practice. So even though you guys aren't like, you might not be interested in engineering, but if you are, you can do things now to get you started. So who here likes to play with like power tools? Power tools? See, some people like power tools. Like power tools are awesome. Like that's a lot of what we do is like building and things. So if you can like learn how to like use power tools or learn how to like program or just like any of those things that you can do kind of like outside on your own, they will help you in the long run. Or like, um, who here plays like with Legos? Why do you guys think Legos is important? Because like, they're fun. Not only are they fun, but what do they build? Stuff. <laughs> yeah, whatever you want. So you like, you're kind of like creative whenever you build with Legos. Um, you're not just like, sometimes you follow instructions, but usually you're doing what you want to do. And so engineering is all about creativity. You can't just Google the answers, you know, when there's like a big problem that comes up, you have to be able to create your own, like, um, answers. So why do you guys think communication is important for engineers? Exactly. So when you're an engineer, you're going to work with other people, whether it's like a business person who's going to fund your project, or maybe it's other different types of engineers and scientists. And you want to be able to collaborate with them and kind of express your ideas. And also when you present, like, we still get kind of nervous sometimes. But, I mean, it's great to be able to practice those skills so that you have them in the future. Um, so why chemical engineering at the University of Utah? So the great thing about the University of Utah, so for one, it's ranked higher than BYU in chemical engineering. I'm just going to put that out there. Um, Second, it's a research school, which means that you basically get paid to do like a research job. And in most fields, that doesn't really happen, or in most schools. So I have like a lab position, and I get paid for it. Um, and so I'm basically kind of like learning on the job. And they have, sorry, can I add to yeah, that? Go ahead. No, you're good. I was just going to say, like, I got a research job as in my 
second semester of college, like as a freshman, and I'm not brilliant, and I'm not perfect, and I'm not really even that good at math, but to be honest, like, if you go into the U as a chemical engineering major, like more, and you take on a bunch of challenges, and you're willing to be creative and learn as you go along, like people are definitely willing to work with you and give you opportunities. So I know a lot of undergrads at the U who have That's research true. jobs, and it's it's pretty cool because it's not like I don't know. For me, at least, like with the math and science stuff, I remember that even now I'm not obsessed with. Like, even as I'm learning the application, I'm kind of like, okay, like, that's cool, I guess, but it's not, like, the best. But once you start, like, really seeing why science matters and why math matters by applying it to research, like, that's when you start, that's when you start having fun. Like, it's a good time. Yes. And then also there's, like, oh, oh sorry. would you go back? Sorry. Um, there's a lot of different things that you go into. So we mentioned that chemical engineering has a lot of applications. So if you want to, you can work like in the nano lab or the nuclear reactor. For example, I do, I'm a chemical engineer, but I work for the nuclear engineering department, and then we do biochemical things. So it's super diverse. Just like whatever you want to do, you can do it. You can do research in whatever you want. And then also there's a lot of scholarships at the University of Utah. So you apply for one scholarship, kind of like one application, and it applies you for all of the scholarships that are available. How many of you guys have thought about, how many are you, of you guys are like juniors? Juniors, sophomores? Juniors. Freshmen? Kind of? Seniors? Okay, a lot what of seniors. seniors. Okay. So you guys okay. gotta get started on this application. How many of you guys have thought about applying for scholarships? Okay. Okay, good. And especially Perfect. if you're a girl going into a science subject, apply for scholarships because you're gonna get them. And it's totally true. Like, I honestly just got given a scholarship. I didn't even apply. They're just like, do you want it? Like, nobody applied for it. And I was like, sure. You know? <laughs> like, So it's, like, awesome for you guys. Like, it's awesome for everyone. But, you know, definitely if you're, like, a girl in engineering, because there aren't many, um, you're, like, guaranteed. And so, and also not just at the University of Utah, but, like, start applying outside of the University of Utah. There's a ton of scholarships kind of like out of state, statewide. So, you know, just Google them. And then I recommend, I went to Highland High School. Um, it's in Salt Lake City. And they have like an online website. So if you just Google like Highland High School, they have like a scholarship tab. And they have a scholarship office that like searches for scholarships and posts them. They do like a bulletin. So every month they have like scholarship postings that are coming up. So if you guys want, like I would recommend, just Google Highland High School and they have like a ton of scholarships for high school students on there. And that's how I got like, I was able to just apply to all the ones that they were there. And then also apply to as many as you can and don't ever get discouraged. Cause like if you think about it kind of like as a probability, like let's say for every 10 scholarships you apply for, you get one scholarship. If you apply to like 100 scholarships, you're getting 10 scholarships. So, and then also don't just apply to like the small scholarships. Don't feel like, you're not good enough to apply to little ones that are like a lot of money because usually a lot of people feel that way so not as many people apply to those so you're actually like more likely to get the ones that are kind of like worth more money um, and then also we have a lot of awesome clubs so this little car that's on the corner is um, from a club called, called, uh, club called Chemi Car and I'm part of that club and so we build this little car and we get to compete um, like all over the nation. So we're going to Atlanta, Georgia in November and it's paid for, which is awesome. And um, I don't know, it's just kind of cool because you get to compete with like a lot of the higher end schools like Cornell and like um, Georgia Tech and things like that. So you kind of get to talk to them and see what it's like. And then, like we said, our school is a little bit better um, in chemical engineering than BYU. So definitely think about the U before you consider BYU. Okay. She's all about fun. I'm not fun, so. <laughs> oh, you can keep going. It just, yeah, this slideshow is Okay, so this is supposed to be Rail Jam, where they like brought in a bunch of snow and then they had people just like ski, but I, they haven't done that like in a couple years, but there are a lot of other cool things if you want to. <laughs>
but we can't yeah, Sorry to update. But they have two free concerts every, like, one concert a semester. And, like, they have cool people, too. So it's not just some rando person. It's, like, they had B.O.B. just barely, like. They had, like, Big Khalifa when he was, like. They had Pretty Allen. Last year or something. Yeah, they have, like, some pretty cool people. And it's fun. And then you can be part of ASUU, which is the student, um, Associated student, like, like something, something, something. I don't know. Yeah, basically, <laughs> it's like student government, and I'm on the ASUU um, environmental board, and that's like awesome. You can also do service like for the Bendon Center, so you can do a bunch of cool stuff there. Um, I'm involved in Greek life, so that's also super fun. Um, I don't know. There are a lot of things to do, and like there are games. Like you can be part of the MUS. Yeah. Really yeah. Nice thing about ASU is like, do you guys have like student clubs here, kind of? No. No? Okay. Well, you can start your own student club over there and you only need three people and you can apply for funding. So there's like clubs of all kinds. Like there's literally like 3DS clubs, like Oprah Winfrey, Winfrey Club, and I'm sure they just like get together and order pizza and watch Oprah Winfrey. You know what I mean? And you get like, you could just have to like apply for the funding and you like get it. So it's pretty nice. Like you can get up to like five thousand dollars a year, like each student club. So it's like why would it you want to just make a club for something down, you know? So we have about three more two two more minutes. Oh really? Ah. Okay, so we're good. Okay, okay that's we're solved, that's it. Okay. Okay. That's well luckily our longest demo got taken away. Would you turn the lights on? Oh we yeah. actually want to keep them off. Though. Oh we keep the lights off. This one. This one's pretty short. So basically what we have here is just a jug and it's plastic and we filled it with isopropyl alcohol. So just really quick, for a combustion reaction, what are some of the things that you need? Oxygen. Okay, oxygen, what about this? So like an ignition source and then I said isopropyl alcohol is in here, so that's like your fuel, right? So pay close attention because it only happens once and it's fast. Oh. Okay. You guys can actually do this at home. Like this is literally just like plastic. So we can do that at home. I would say so. Yeah. Nice. It's like plastic and like a lighter, oh, and then yeah. isopropyl alcohol, which is like rubbing alcohol. My husband is something. Yeah. I recommend. I'm just kidding. Don't quote me there. Yeah. <laughs> Don't quote me there. Okay. okay. Oh, oh, the fog machine. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you run with it? Oh. Look at that. So what do you guys think is happening here? Most of our students can actually do that with their own fingers. What? Does it smell? 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 Does it we learned that air moves like a fluid, which is pretty cool. So even though it's not water, it kind of moves like it a little bit. And um, right here we have like this huge space, which is what we filled all of the fog into. And it's coming out of like this tiny space over here. And so it folds into itself and it turns into this ring, which is called a toroid. So that's pretty cool. So do you guys think it would work if it was a different shape? No. So if it was no, like a so why not? So like what would happen in the corners? It would want to form a ring, but it'd be like all distorted because of the corners, because it can't really fold, you know? And then this one, I don't know if you guys will be able to see, so you guys might have to like... You can turn on the lights search. and as you leave, maybe. Okay. Oh, would you turn the lights on? Do you guys have any questions for us? Does anybody want to try this? Oh, oh yes. yeah, so I can take oh, a picture. Yeah. <laughs> turn, yeah, thank you. Okay, one second. Oh, right. I have to take a picture, hold on. Okay, here, we're gonna put the, it actually works with the light on. Hey. Hey. Can I take a picture, yo? Yeah. Well, well, I think you can some tickets for Valley here. Oh, sorry. Real quick. I do some tickets for Valley. You didn't put your ticket in? Oh, well. All right. Well, uh, we've got t-shirts. We've got a couple of beanies. Okay. Put it on the chair. Wait, wait, wait. I said, oh my gosh. I'm ready. <laughs> I got Nathan Williams. <laughs> No, you gave it to the wrong guy.
someone else saying it, so I can get them their picture. Oh, my God. 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 O